The City of Bristol, providing beautiful parks, economic development, and a family-friendly community. I'd like to welcome you to the joint meeting of the Board of Finance and City Council for February. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you. Tonight we have a majority of our members that are on screen and in council chambers we have five council members and our board of finance chairman. So we're going to get started with the first item on the joint meeting, the approval of minutes of the regular joint meeting from January 12th. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two is the consent agenda for the joint meeting, which is items A through N. Are there any members of the joint meeting who would like to pull an agenda item off of the consent calendar for further discussion? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item three is to transfer $20,000 from the general fund contingency account to the insurance operating budget. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item four is to transfer $25,000 from the general fund contingency account to the Human Resources Operating Budget. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item five <clears throat> is to transfer $7,150 from the Capital Projects Contingency Account for the repair of the synthetic turf fields. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item six is to make an additional appropriation of $2.8 million within the Capital Projects Fund for the Memorial Boulevard Bridge Reconstruction Project funded by the sale of bonds and grant revenue. So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is to approve a resolution appropriating $3.1 million for the Memorial Boulevard Bridge Reconstruction Project and to waive the reading of the resolution but to include it as part of the minutes. So this is a resolution. Is there a motion? Please roll call. So moved. Second. Yep, and second. And now roll call starting in chambers. Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Commissioner Makowski? Aye. Nobody else in chambers? Okay, now moving to the screen, we're gonna go in order of how you appear to us. So, Commissioner Mace? Aye. Commissioner Calfee? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Mary Fortier? Aye. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Am I missing anyone? Uh, uh, commission, Commissioner Tebow. Commissioner yes. Tebow, yes. And, and I, I did call on you, Orlando, right? Okay. So the resolution carries. I thought it was Burns, but who made the second for the resolution? Orlando did. Oh, okay. Thank you, Orlando. Okay, so everybody votes in favor of the resolution. Um, moving on to eight, which is another resolution, to approve a resolution authorizing the issuance of bonds, notes, or other obligations in the amount of $3.1 million to finance the appropriation for the Memorial Boulevard Bridge Reconstruction Project and to waive the reading of the resolution, but to include it as part of the minutes. Move it. Second. So motion by Smith, second by Hahn. Again, a resolution vote starting in chambers. First, we'll start with Commissioner Makowski. Yes. Barney. Yes. 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 
And to the screen, Commissioner Mace? Yes. Kelfie? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Councilman Fortier? Yes. Commissioner Tebow? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Everybody keeps moving. Did I, did I get everybody? Yeah. Okay. Resolution passes. Everybody is in agreement. Okay. Moving on. Item nine, to make an additional appropriation of $56,000 within the Capital Projects Fund for the Memorial Boulevard Retaining Wall Project. This is the one that fell into the river in November. This is unrelated to the previous bridge work that we just voted on. Motion approval. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the monthly revenue and expense report presentation by controller Diane Waldron. Good evening. Hope everyone's surviving the weather. Okay, <laughs> last few weeks. A um, couple things to just report. Um, you do have the report in front of you, uh, my revenue and expenditure report. I know I did mention that the tax revenues seem like they're lagging a little bit on this report. Um, the, this, the, basically, it's just the timing. Uh, January 31st was over the weekend. February 1st was the last day to receive taxes. Um, so uh, the tax office was really still processing tax payments that first week of February. Um, so just to put things a little bit in perspective, the 114 million 315 that's on your report, they collected almost an additional $5 million just in those first two days after, this, after you received this report. Um, so right now, um, I know the tax collector and I talk just about every every uh, week or so just to see how collections are coming in. And uh, there was nothing th at this point. I know with the tax deferral until April 1st, I think a lot of uh, taxpayers will take advantage of that. So we'll just keep monitoring the collections between now and then. But I do expect there will be a lag until April 1st. I think more will take advantage of it this time as opposed to the October 1st deferment. Um, and you'll notice that again also on the collections of the motor vehicle supplement. Um, the total billed was 2.2 million, uh, but so far we've only collected 682,000. So again, I think it's that lag that people are taking advantage of that, uh, that deferral and the collections for that first week of, um, of February. Um, and the building permits, uh, they're doing very well there. Uh, we're 84.7% with five, seven months uh, completed for the, through the fiscal year. Uh, that compares to 78.9% in the prior year. But last year, the prior year budget number was a little bit lower, so we're actually starting at a little bit of a higher base this year. Uh, conveyance fees, and I know our city clerk uh, just spoke to this at our budget meeting with the comptroller staff this week. Uh, they're coming in extremely strong. Right now we're at 145.3% of budget at almost $1.2 million. I think at this trend and based on what we're seeing, we expect that this will be a few hundred thousand dollars over what we had anticipated. So I say that that is very good news because if you look at the next revenue line item, investment earnings are not doing well at all right now. Um, we had budgeted 556,000. Um, right now we are at 150,618. Um, so we're only at 27%. And I think if you look at that little chart that I included down here, uh, the green bar shows where we were last year at this time at the end of January. So we were well almost at $800,000 at this point in time last year. And this year we're, we're only at um, 150,000. Again, to be expected, we saw the rates coming down last year. We did bump our budget number down. Um, so we'll just keep a close eye on that. But again, um, thankfully we have the conveyance fees and the, uh, and the building permits, which are coming in very strong. Um, on the expenditures, nothing really to report there. I think I did report last month that we did get the approval for the storm uh, on January 12th. Uh, so those costs will be put in for reimbursement um, through FEMA. So we'll, uh, I'll let you know how that reimbursement goes. I know our public works office will be submitting those uh, costs. A couple of other things just to report. Um, I know later on in the council agenda, but I'll just say it for the benefit of the Board of Finance members that are here. Um, there is a discussion on the pension and health costs. Um, just to let you know, I know one of the things that was on the Board of Finance, uh, I guess goals or one of their directives was to have the Retirement Board issue an RFP for an advisor. 
Um, the retirement board has been working on that. Uh, they actually uh, have hired Hooker and Holcomb to assist them with that process. And they will be approving an RFP uh, this Thursday at their next meeting. And the hope is that that will go out and that will be back uh, the end of March. So that's the time frame for that. And we hope that uh, we could take a look at the uh, advisor fees and uh, make some progress there. The other thing, I uh, just want to comment on the health insurance. That also is marketed by our health insurance consultants locked in. Uh, we will be reviewing the results this week. Uh, we did receive four responses for medical and uh, pharmacy from four carriers and uh, the same with our dental insurance. So we hope that uh, after we review that, we can make a decision. We'll probably interview a couple of the uh, uh, recommendations from locked in and then make a decision for July 1. Uh, the Board of Finance meeting uh, next week or like the 23rd, uh, the audit auditors will be here. If you're so inclined to come and listen to them present and um, talk about highlights of the audit, they'll be at that meeting. Um, also at that meeting, we will be starting our budget hearings. Um, so my office has basically completed just about all department reviews. I think we have public works and fire remaining. Um, but the first budget hearing with the Board of Finance will be on the 23rd. Uh, it will be mostly with the smaller departments, uh, but I have asked a couple of department heads to come and present, um, particularly the tax collector, the assessor, um, IT, court counsel, St. Vincent de Paul, I think it's important to maybe hear from them based on some of the projects that they have going on right now. Um, city clerk, you don't know this yet, Therese, but we're gonna ask you to come <laughs> and talk about your revenues, and economic development. One thing I do want to mention on the uh, budget, we actually are starting uh, the, the budget process out very well. Um, the assessor has completed the grand list. Um, there was a $74.7 million growth, which was 1.35% over the prior year. Um, and I know I have asked the assessor when he presents on uh, the 23rd to just give a brief overview of the grand list as well. Um, I'm sorry, last year's grand list, grand list growth was 1.35, this year's is 1.87, um, 74.7 million in total. Um, he has said that this was the best grand list growth he has seen in 12 years. Um, to put things in perspective, that will generate uh, $2.8 million in revenue, um, which represents 0.73 of a mil. So I think that's a good place to be starting the budget process off. So I thought I just wanted to report on that. And if, uh, if you can make it to the budget hearing, I have asked him to just give a brief overview on what some of the driving uh, factors were with the uh, grant list. I think that's all I have, <laughs> unless there are questions. Are there any questions for the controller? All right, well, thank you. And we look forward to the budget. If there's no other business, then a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, for those that are online, we're going to continue right into our city council meeting after maybe a brief one minute break so that we can get everybody else seated so you can stay on the line for the next portion of our meeting. So this meeting is adjourned. Uh, we'll reconvene city council shortly. We're going to start our meeting first by asking those who are able to please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So first, I'd like to ask the city council members to introduce themselves, starting on my far right. Peter Kelly, 2nd District. Greg Hahn, 1st District. Scott Rosado, District 1. Dave Perleski, District 2. Brittany Barney, 3rd District. And we have Councilman Mary Fortier, who is on uh, our Zoom up on the screen. Present. Thank you. Our first item is our moment of reflection that we do before every meeting um, with February being the 11th month of our COVID pandemic and all of the work that we've done in order to mitigate that. 
I'd just like to take a moment to reflect on the 123 Bristol residents who lost their lives since March due to the COVID pandemic. Thank you. Our second item is the approval of our regular minutes from our January 12th, 2021 meeting. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. For public participation, we have two presentations tonight. The first is the swearing in of our new Bristol Fire Marshal and Fire Inspector with the Fire Department. So to begin, I'd like to first ask our new fire inspector, Gary Buzzle, to step forward. Welcome, Gary. I'd like to ask that you raise your right hand and the oath of office for your new position. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, the laws and ordinances of the City of Bristol, and the rules of the Bristol Fire Department, and that you will discharge the duties of fire inspector according to the best knowledge and ability. I swear. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, as part of our festivities, we usually have someone come forward to pin you with your new badge. Okay, who has gotten significantly taller since the last time I saw her. Okay, Elena, try not to pierce them. Thank you. And it's my honor to present you with your new badge for your helmet, for you, your new duties when you're on scene. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And next, I'd like to ask Christopher Lambert to come forward. He is being appointed tonight our fire marshal. Both he and Inspector Buzzle have gone through an intensive and rigorous class and testing process over almost the last year, thanks to the delays associated with the pandemic. So tonight, we are very pleased to present you with your helmet with your new shield that you will now have for your new duties. You can put that aside. And now I'd like to administer the oath to you in the role of fire marshal. Do you, Christopher Lambert, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, the laws and ordinances of the City of Bristol, the rules and regulations of the Bristol Fire Department, and that you will discharge the duties of Fire Marshal to the best of your abilities? Congratulations. And I believe we need two people to help tonight. Bryce and Brendan are here to, someone has a job to take something off and somebody has a job to put something on. Okay. <laughs> that was easy. Good job. These are two extremely critical positions for the Bristol Fire Department. I'd like to thank the members of the department who are here to support their fellow colleagues in this new role that they're both taking. Um, both of them served very admirably on the line for the Bristol Fire Department, and we have high expectations for the enthusiasm and commitment that they're now going to bring to the Office of the Fire Marshal, which protects and looks into all the investigatory issues for people who have fires and as well as other investigations are often on scene at some of people's worst times. So the customer service aspect, both which you exemplify to a very high degree is gonna come very much in need as you continue these duties along with the other people in the fire marshal's office. So thank you for your diligence with your schoolwork, with everything that you've done to get past that testing process and for coming to work every day with a, a joy of getting that job done. We really appreciate all that you're done 
and all that you're going to do. So thank you for joining us tonight. We are going to take a quick three minute break so that we can take some pictures and then we will be back to handle the agenda and the business of the city. May I have a motion to recess? So motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We will be recessed for two minutes for some pictures and for to allow some people to leave, although you're all invited to stay if you'd really like to. <laughs> okay, we need a motion to reconvene. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our second public participation is to introduce the community to the new president of the NAACP, Eric Clemens. Um, we've asked him to come and address the council and, and the public at large. Uh, it is Black History Month, so there's a lot of things going on. So I'd like to invite him to the podium. He is accompanied tonight by Tim Camerill and Lexi Mangum, who have also been very involved in various city events and activities. Good evening, Council, Mayor. It's so uh, great to be here tonight and uh, kind of introduce myself. I am Eric Clemens, a uh, background mostly in broadcasting until that guy here, we, we're going to talk about this after yes. it's all over. <laughs> he said, well, you should really think about becoming the next president. <laughs> I was <like>, why? <laughs> but, I, and I think he's here to make sure that you, <laughs> yes, you don't he, resign. He makes sure he's going to stick around. But uh, Lexi has done some great work. Um, with the community and uh, huge shoes to fill, but I believe and I'm going to work very hard to make sure that the communication between our officials, our elected officials, our fire, our police, all those who serve us, that we keep an open line of communication going and we continue to expand and grow. We talk about the need for discussions amongst the people that serve us and the people in the community. Well, I'm totally for that and I believe that can happen. And I'll just read from the NAACP's mission statement, which says the mission of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality, rather, of rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. And much of that kind of stuff comes from just ignorance. It's just a lack of education a lack of uh, really understanding what we've never been exposed to or might not understand. And so we're here to bridge that gap and to continue that work at the NAACP, the Bristol branch, and under, I still call on these guys a lot for some wisdom uh, and, and, and learning how to handle things the right way. I've already met several council people, especially Councilman Rosado there, I've met the mayor, talked to the uh, police chief, Brian and assistant or deputy chief and I look forward to meeting all the rest of you and, and being open to this community and, and helping us resolve issues that do come up, uh, often misunderstandings that do come up and we need to continue those discussions. So that's all I really had to say and uh, looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any public participation? Okay. Can I go on the screen? Mm -hmm. So there is nobody from within chambers that, is, that is signed up for public participation. So now we're going to go to the people who are joining us on the Zoom. Is there anybody that would like to speak during public participation for the city council meeting? I would. Could you please identify yourself with your name uh, and your well, address? I'm the youth commissioner. I just want to say that uh, I agree with the NAACP and that we should have a more open line of communication. And I just I stand with them and I agree. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Anybody else from the Zoom call that would like to address the city council? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to announcements. Are there any announcements by members of the council, starting on my far right? Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. I, I just like to go off script a little oh. bit, uh, although I know that's uh, 
something that concerns you. Um, I, I just want to thank uh, Ray Rogozinski uh, from the Department of Public Works and Craig Kasparian, the street superintendent. I, I got quite a few calls the last big storm we had, and they were very responsive. Uh, in one case, uh, Ray was on, on a spot within 10 minutes and really addressed all the concerns of the citizens that contacted me. And particularly with a storm of the magnitude of the first, it's very difficult to place snow. And they did a great job, and when there were concerns by citizens, they addressed them. So it, they, they, they really made me look good in being so responsive. So I'd like to thank them for the job they did. They did do a great job. I, the first storm was really complicated, and it, the duration of it, the length of it, and you know, I think people get frustrated with the snow. I know I do. And then to have it followed with last week's storm, and then they're, they've been out all day today as well. And then we have more in the forecast. It does make it extremely complicated in terms of where to put the snow. You, you put it exactly right. So we're continuing to be innovative. We have loaders. We have snow removal operations. Uh, we do continue to worry about our seniors that have difficulty moving this amount of snow. And we are receiving calls and requests for people who are looking for help. And so if there is anybody watching tonight that is associated with scout troops or any other types of organizations, uh, we are probably going to start and uh, reactivate the Bristol All Heart hotline again because we do know that there are some volunteers who have offered in the past. I know Councilman Hahn has done so with some groups, but we really want to make sure that we don't compound any serious medical or, or accidents. Um, by snow removal by our, our senior population. I've heard a lot on the radio just in the last week of people out, there's lots of falls, medical calls for police and ambulance. And it's really something that I think as a community, if we can work together and you know look out for our neighbors, specifically if, if you know that there's older people in your neighborhood, if we could all work together, um, I think that that would be important. Another phone number that's critical instead of having delays and getting a response is people can always call the public works yard directly and talk to the dispatcher if there's something happening on your street especially during a snowstorm when we're active that phone number is 860-584-7791 they can immediately talk to the um, district leaders of every plow district they can get to the to the people who are in charge, the supervisors, and there's opportunities there to quickly fix something if a neighborhood has an issue. Um, we also will do our annual reminder that if a plow truck, private or public, um, hired by the city of Bristol knocks down your mailbox, there is a, a process for that. And um, that would be, you could call the public works department during regular business hours, and it's a, a very easy process. So, you know, on behalf of all of us, uh, we appreciate the people's patience. I think that our roads are in great condition. We do a series of pre-treating and then clearing and scraping and then treating again. And it, there's a lot involved in it. And there's a lot involved with the coordination of all the districts, dealing with higher elevations, dealing with cul-de-sacs, which is very difficult with this amount of snow. We have a, a lot of neighborhoods with highly dense um, neighborhoods with, with very narrow streets. And it's really important as well that everybody take into account our parking ban because that allows the roads to get into the good condition that they're in. When there's cars parked there, it impedes our ability to plow. It also impedes the ability of fire and police to respond. So that's a critical aspect, the, the parking ban, that I know is also very unpopular in certain neighborhoods, but it makes it happen in terms of that final result. So thank you for bringing that up. And yes, they did a great job this past week. Announcements? Uh, yes, I just have a couple of things. Uh, we have uh, quite a few people in City Hall that go above and beyond, and today I'd like to thank and wish a happy birthday to our city clerk, <laughs> Teresa Peck. Um, it's her birthday today, and she showed up here anyway, so appreciate it and wish you well. Also, we have Attorney Stieg's birthday today as well, and you're here in City Council, so thank you very much for showing up tonight, and many good wishes. Okay. Announcements, Councilman Rosado. You know what, while we're thanking everybody, 
I was going to thank them anyway. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank Eric and the NAACP for coming out this evening, uh, Tim and Lexi uh, for the support in this weather. Um, I, I look forward to having the communication and, and some of the difficult conversations that, you know, may we may need to hear um, to help strengthen our community. So I look forward to working with you guys as the whole council does and getting you guys involved with some of maybe our other committees like the diversity council. So I'm kind of, it's a hint to recruit a liaison <laughs> to help us out. But, you know, we're all here and uh, it's all for the betterment of the community. So thank you guys again for coming out this evening. Thank you. Announcements? <laughs> Nothing, thank you. No, not for me. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. We have items. What? Oh, Mary, sorry. I keep forgetting you're up there. <laughs> Mary, do you have any announcements? I'm sorry I'm not with you, but I did have one announcement, sure. actually. And it has to do with free tax preparation. Um, we have two organizations in Bristol that are working with the uh, VITA program, which is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, where the IRS has trained volunteers to help qualified residents um, with their taxes. And one location is at HRA, which is the former BCO space downtown, and the United Way on North Main Street are both participating in this program. It, it, you qualify if you make less than $69,000 a year, and this year they are doing sort of a hybrid um, type of program in the sense that you're not going into the office and sitting there with the counselor and the volunteer and, and getting your taxes done, but you can make an appointment, drop off your paperwork, and wait in your car and talk to those volunteers if they need to ask you questions to prepare your taxes. It's an important year for everyone to file their taxes because of all the stimulus funds. Some of them will be uh, received through your tax return. And again, this is for anyone that makes less than $69,000. And I'm going to give the phone number to call to make that appointment this year. It's 860-356-2000. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now we can do the consent calendar. We have items 5A through H. Do any members of the council wish to remove any of the items on the consent calendar for further discussion? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. No move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item six is reports and committee reports, and the first one is from the Real Estate Committee. Yes, Your Honor, I have a motion. I hereby move that the following property be referred to the Planning Commission for a CGS 8-24 report for the purpose of selling a certain parcel of land known as Lot 12 Waterbury Road. I hereby further move that the above-mentioned property be referred to the Public Department of Public Works and Water and Sewer Department to determine if they have a use for the property prior to being sold. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B is a report from the Ordinance Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Ordinance Committee has asked that we move this, uh, uh, present this motion to the Council um, as, as regarding uh, Chapter 10, Solid Waste. I hereby move that the time and place of Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 at 5.15 p.m. in the first floor meeting room, City Hall, 111 North Main Street, Bristol, Connecticut, be set for the holding of a public hearing thereon by the Ordinance Committee and, the, and that the City Clerk publish notice of said public hearing and the proposed amendments to the Code of Ordinances as required by City Charter. Your Honor, this uh, amendment was um, presented by our Public Works Director, uh, Ray Rogozinski, and it's designed really to bring the um, ordinance up to standards for how they operate currently. Second. A motion has been made and seconded. Are there any comments concerning the public hearing? I know that we reviewed that ordinance at Public Works Commission as well. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll stick with Councilman Perleski for item C, which is a report from the Memorial Boulevard Arts Magnet School Building Committee. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The uh, building committee continues to meet monthly. Um, I'm uh, happy to tell you that the construction is going along fairly well. Um, 
interestingly, the project is moving from a demolition type of project to construction. Uh, the soft concrete floor has been poured uh, on a couple of the floors and the um, foundation work and uh, excavation for the addition to the building that's on the westerly side of the building has, has, has taken place. Um, we are in budget to date and um, we're carefully watching the timeline for the project to ensure that we'll make that uh, deadline as well. I think that's it, Your Honor, for that. Thank you. The next item is an update from the School Readiness Council from its liaison, Councilman Kelly. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I Close have a brief, to the microphone. Close I have a brief yet scripted school readiness report. And, scripted uh, for, by who? Well, I, I can't really divulge that. <laughs> um, it's once again time to register for kindergarten. Registration started uh, February 2nd, and it's a very simple process. You go to the Board of Education website under Department Central Registration, and it's just a two-step process. And there is also a new initiative related to uh, getting ready for kindergarten and registering. It's called Ready for K, and it's a new text-based app initiative whereby parents receive three texts a week, and it's information about child development, positive parenting strategies, all based on getting your child ready for kindergarten. And it's also gonna be utilizing both local and national resources. And the t intent obviously is to get our children ready for kindergarten. And this new initiative is gonna replace the, book the booklet that used to be handed out at the registration. And if parents are interested in the app and they don't have children enrolled in a center-based program, they can go to the library and register there. Uh, the child does need to be a Bristol resident. Uh, that is uh, required. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other reports or committee reports to come before the council? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to unfinished business. Um, I did put on the citywide COVID update. We have had some new activity considering that we are now into our vaccine mode. Um, but for those who like data, I will update you that we are approaching 4,500 cases in Bristol of people who have been diagnosed with COVID since March. As I mentioned earlier, that also includes 123 deaths. In Bristol, there have been over 106,000 tests administered. So that has been, I think, a very good contributing factor to us understanding what some of our community dynamics are and related to this. We are still doing testing seven days a week across the street from City Hall, but we have now moved into vaccination mode. And the Bristol Burlington Health District has vaccinated over 1,500 seniors themselves, as well as first responders and critical infrastructure since the vaccine has become available. They are going to be doing small clinics for seniors every Wednesday based on availability of vaccine. There is one tomorrow and there is one the following Wednesday as well. Those times vary based on when the vaccine comes, but tomorrow is two to four you do need to have an appointment. And this actually points to one of the larger issues that we've been trying to handle, which is the fact that the registration process through VAMS has been difficult for seniors. And with them being the most vulnerable population um, and then having this tech piece to it, it's something that we've been trying to deal with. So how we've done it, as have other cities and towns, is that we've resorted to our own registration piece. Um, what we're doing is having our senior center staff register any senior who is interested in doing so and does not want to go through VAMS or who does not have uh, an email address or doesn't have computer proficiency. That has been working very well. What they do is they register the senior for their first dose at either the closed clinic at the Bristol Burlington Health District. They did it for the drive through that happened a week ago and they'll continue to do it. But what we've now done is we've linked together our partners, our healthcare partners in town, and the senior center is now registering people for the Bristol Hospital Clinics as well. 
We also are in conversation weekly with the hospital, the health district, the senior center, and also community health centers. Because what we would like to do is stand up another drive-through vaccine clinic at Lake Compounds. But unfortunately, the state is not right now approving any additional sites based until the um, vaccine becomes more readily available. So we are lobbying hard for that. We would like Bristol to be that location for ease of vaccination. But for right now, we are open for 65 to 74 year olds. The phone lines are jammed at the senior center. We encourage anyone who gets a busy signal, you can even call right now and leave a voicemail. They will call you back and schedule you. So that's been going very well. And the senior center staff and the health district staff are working uh, extremely hard every day to get as many people scheduled as possible. Uh, they are also, Bristol Hospital is um, going to do some outreach. They're gonna be at the American Legion Hall this Friday from 10 to one. They are going to help people register. And it doesn't necessarily have to be for the Bristol Hospital Clinic. Anybody who needs a little extra help, they will be happy to register you. They will be back at the American Legion the following Friday on February 19th for this same exercise. So again, you don't necessarily have to register for the Bristol Hospital Vaccination Clinic, but it's just out there for community outreach to help people register in general. The CVS and Walgreens are coming online soon. You can also make appointments if you do use VAMS to go anywhere. You can go to Rensselaer Field, you can go to other towns, you could go to other health districts in some cases, and wherever there's an available vaccine that those listings become available. So a good shout out to Bristol Health for being good community neighbors in that respect. Does anybody have any questions on the COVID update or any questions in general? Okay, and then moving on to our second unfinished business, our controller alluded to it during her report, but we do have an update on our RFPs that are out for both pension and health insurance. We have been doing this with everybody that has any type of contractual professional fee relationship over the last three years, and we are down to these two and one more, and then we will have completed, I think it's almost eight or nine different consultants that we've gone out to bid for in order to um, assure that we're getting the best product. So I'll turn it over to Councilman Perleski for his update. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, there are a couple of projects that are ongoing that um, uh, we hope will um, provide um, a financial benefit to the city uh, and a, a positive effect on the budget. Um, our comptroller, Diane Waldron, talked about this a little bit earlier in our joint meeting with the Board of Finance. But um, uh, and from the pension board, retirement board, um, our investment policy, as well as best business practices, provide that we, from time to time, will go out and um, procure bids for our investment management. It had, the last time the city did that was in 2012, I mm -hmm. believe. Uh, so we're overdue for a review uh, and a, a rebidding process. We hired Hookham and Holcomb to um, uh, structure the bid, and that's going out, and, and we hope to uh, have some news over the next few months regarding um, our review of our investment manager. Uh, along the same lines, uh, as many investors know, last year was a robust year in the stock market and our pension funds are no different. As of 12-31-20, our pension fund balance was $740,874,000. It's the highest it's ever been in the history, I think, of the pension fund. Um, based on our current calculation, I say this cautiously, we have a 156% uh, coverage ratio for our liabilities. I say cautiously, Mayor, because um, we uh, will have a, a new, our new report from our actuaries that they think is due this week, th later this week. They'll be at Board of Finance, yep. They'll be Board of Finance, and um, we are... Um, uh, have a, we have a, a short-term, medium-term policy to change our our um, investment return policy. Uh, so the 156% looks good, but I think it's inflated to a certain de uh, degree, but we're keeping our eye on it, Mayor. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I think that's about it for the pension uh, retirement board. And as, again, as Comptroller uh, Waldron had uh, announced earlier, we're also doing a rebidding and review of our health care plan for dental and health and that an RP is going out and um, 
we, or has gone out, excuse me, and we've already had um, at least I know of four qualified vendors who are uh, seeking to do business with the city. So we'll get back to this council uh, when it's appropriate, but uh, within the next couple of months, I would assume. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Does anybody have any questions about the RFP process for the consultants? Um, I, I do. Dave, Dave, you said that we'd go every three years usually for, we go every three years uh, the, to rebid uh, or? Well, you know, um, for the pension, you know, Councilman Rosado, I don't know the exact time uh, frame that's embedded in the investment policy, but I'm not sure it's three years. It might be five to seven. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Yeah, Diane's waving yes. Okay, good. But we're a little bit overdue on that one. Um, and on the health care plan, I think it's um, as an as-needed basis, Mayor. Do you know if there's a set policy for that? There's no set policy. I don't believe there it's, is. It's been a while for that one as well, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Nine but, years, six years. But, you know, Scott, we continually look at it, and we um, um, we, uh, we try to use best practices whenever we can. But uh, we're, we're in, as the mayor had said, we're, we've done a, re a general review of most of our consultants this year. Great. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do any council members have any other unfinished business? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to new business. And the first item is from Councilwoman Barney. Yes, so the fire board has made a recommendation that uh, the city council refer an item to the ordinance com committee. So I'm looking for a motion uh, to revise the open burning ordinance to include specific language on acceptable and unacceptable burn materials, along with providing a brief con uh, description of what constitutes a smoke nuisance. I'll move that. Second. Discussion. Uh, just to add, uh, the fire board asks that we review this because the fire marshal's offers, office has received um, lots of phone calls from the public looking for this clarification and guidance regarding the open boarding, burning order ordinance, and uh, it would just help the public to better and more safely uh, utilize the service in the, the privacy of their homes without disturbing their neighbors if it was more clearly understood, uh, you know, what qualified as, as suitable. So, Any further questions? Motion has been made to refer to ordinance committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is the update on the city's marketing focus for increasing diversity within our hiring process. Uh, we've made great strides in the last three years, but we are still struggling to recruit and attract candidates to the police and fire service. And so over the last, I would say probably two months, both the police commission and the fire commission have been looking at different options because we are both going to have entry level lists in process over the next year. The fire one just hit the uh, personnel website today. The application process is open. Anybody can apply to be a Bristol firefighter through May 1st, at which point we will start processing applications. Uh, the list is usually good for two years. It includes a physical agility test called CPAT. It includes a written test and it includes an oral interview. At that point, everybody is ranked and we have five points for residency and we have five points for veteran service. We hire an order, we evaluate an order and that is something that um, we're focusing on. The police commission has a list right now that's in the field that we just certified, but it's a very short list. And usually years ago, it, you, you would, the expression was you could die on the list, which means they would never get to you. Um, we've burned through, what is it, Chief, two lists in the last two years, I think, because the candidates just either they go to other departments or there's obstacles with background checks or the polygraph or they're just not hired. So we need to do a better job in terms of putting the process out there, having people understand the process, what's needed and what those steps are. So in doing so, we looked at some of our marketing funds within the two departments as well as um, in the marketing fund. And we are going to have billboards starting March 1st. And yesterday and today, we had Lindsay Vigu in at the fire department. And then today was the police department taking some pictures of our uh, fire and police personnel. We have, we featured in the fire department four people and in the police department three people including our newly promoted sergeant uh, damon wilson we have um, police officer eddie rivera and we have detective joanne latanzio 
And in the fire department, we are featuring um, local resident Dory Greger, who is a firefighter. We are featuring Lieutenant Adrian Plord, our female firefighter. We are featuring um, firefighter George Sanchez, and we're also um, featuring Chris Lambert, who is newly promoted to fire marshal, who was on the line for a number of years. So it's going to be, I think, in four different locations around the city for about a six-week process to get people to see the website, understand what's needed, and maybe look at that. We're also going to augment the city personnel website with some additional information about how to access testing materials, study materials, what the CPAT, and for the police commission test, um, for agility, it's the CHIP test, I think they call it. So there's going to be additional information there. We've lost some good candidates because they didn't understand the importance of cardiovascular or the, the timing that they needed for the mile run, those types of things, which are really ba barriers that we could easily combat. So that's the purpose of it. And then with the vaccinations going well and with the nice weather hopefully upon us soon, the other piece is hopefully doing some open houses that can be done outside at firehouses. It can be done outside here at City Hall in between here and the police department where people who are interested candidates can come and ask questions in an informal type setting of people who are already doing the job. And if possible, we would be welcoming um, any opportunities for mentoring if there was a connection made or there's people who are interested in doing that. So that's going to really help dictate what we do over the next two lists. And we're very anxious to see if any of these have any positive impact on creating a better pool of candidates and a, and a larger pool, really, than what we've been dealing with. If anybody has any ideas or yeah, anything you've seen in other communities, please bring them to us because all of this is just going to be rolled out in the next six to eight weeks and we can easily make um, changes to and additions to that. But so far, based on what I've seen in the last couple of days, I think the billboard's going to be great. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Where's that going? I don't know. There's four locations. I think Broad Street, West End, Intersection, I'm not sure about Route 6, and then I think one off of Route 72. Okay. Does anybody else have any new business that they'd like to bring forward to the City Council? Um, if I could just add, Your Honor, I just wanted to say thank you for driving the discussion about diversity. I know since I've been on the fire board, it's been a topic that we've kind of uh, been trying to roll the ball along for. You know, we tried the consortium. We've tried different ways of hiring. Uh, but kudos to the city staff for stepping up, for working with the police department, too, to use this marketing budget to better uh, attract a more diverse candidate group for both those departments. So um, just thank you to you, you Mayor. Uh, for driving the conversation and helping us to think outside the box with how we hire, um, especially for the fire department, who's going to be doing a huge amount of hiring in the future. Um, it's been a really strategic process, and, and I'm happy to be a part of it and seeing kind of a rebirth in, in, uh, of the fire department, the way we think of that career. So thank you. Yeah, I, that's a great point that I forgot to mention. In the course of the next 14 to 16 months between now and June 30th, 2022, we will be looking to hire a minimum of 13 firefighters. And at the police department side, we also anticipate maybe not as many, but there shall be some retirements that roll through, um, mostly because we've changed the way the city does its retirement insurance, and that change goes into effect on July 1st, 2022. So there's a lot of people who are planning with that J June 30th date in mind for retirement eligibility. So thank you for that. It's, it's really... It's also combined with us needing to increase our applicant pool. It's because we're anticipating that there's an awfully good chance for people to become firefighters and police officers based on the um, retirements that are happening in the departments. Okay. There's no other new business. I will turn agenda item nine over to the birthday girl. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's only one resignation, Your Honor, and it's from David Hartley from the Bristol Transportation Commission. Motion to accept and place on file. So moved. And to send a letter of thanks. Unfortunately, due to his new duties with the Department of Transportation, Mr. Hartley feels that he may have a conflict with being on the Transportation Commission. So uh, we are going to try to find another board for him to serve on. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, next up is appointments. There's only a couple for this month. Uh, the first is to reappoint Sheila Herons, who for an unexpired term to March of 2022 for the Commission on Aging. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. For the Board of Public Works to reappoint Michael Dumas, three-year term to February of 2024. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And then the next one is a technical appointment to make Nicolette Arati and Erica Mikulak, who are two Bristol Burlington Health District sanitarians, to make them citation hearing officers with the Bristol Burlington Health District. So may I have a motion for that? Motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. So for the viewing audience, the vacancies that currently are in the uh, various commissions is I do have a vacancy on the Bristol Historic District Commission, which I do believe someone has expressed an interest, but I wasn't able to get in touch with them today. Um, I'm looking for a mayor's appointment for the Housing Authority. We are looking for a member to serve on the Youth Commission, a citizen member. And now we have a vacancy on the Transportation Commission. So those are the vacancies that currently exist within the city. Okay, moving on to agenda item 11. It's a resolution regarding the Senior Volunteer Tax Relief Pilot Program from July 1st, 2020 to December 1st, 2021, and to waive the reading of the resolution, but to include it as part of the minutes. We discussed this last month. We are um, elongating the parameters of when people can do their volunteer hours because of COVID and we didn't want anybody to lose out on the $300 tax credit. So this is the same program that we've already always done, but now they have an extra six months to do volunteer hours. So moved. Okay. All right, this is a roll call vote. We will start with Mary Fortier. Aye. <laughs> Councilman Kelly. Yes. 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 Mayor votes yes. Resolution is approved. Mayor, item tw can yes. There, can there be a speck of discussion on this? I just had an item I wanted to bring to folks' attention, and I, I'm not sure if it would fit in with this, but on one of the boards on which I serve, um, someone had asked if the fact that uh, citizens who volunteer on our boards and commissions might be able to count that as volunteer service for this credit if they otherwise uh, were eligible for the program. And I, I had said I would bring that to the council and the mayor's attention, and I meant to do it before this meeting, but it's something I don't know if it is up to Patty um, at the senior center um, to decide the parameters of what constitutes volunteer work, but I, someone mm -hmm. suggested, and I thought that was a, a, a fair um, suggestion that some we have some um, people who have served for years and they serve many hours a year mm -hmm. on some of our boards and commissions. I, I think we would be totally open to that. And you know, the one thing that we should also mention is that there is an income guideline on this. So people need to do both. There needs to be the volunteer hours and then they also have to fit within the income guidelines. But I think especially because city service on boards and commissions is documented with minutes and attendance, it would be very easy for them to put that in as a volunteer activity, and I would support that. Does anybody have any other? Agree. agree? Yeah, it's a great idea. Yep. yep, I can pass that along to Patty that that might be something that she would be seeing. Okay, thank you. The next item is, the next two items are in relation to our, our work for renovating City Hall. The first is a word of contract 2P21 031B, the construction manager at risk for renovations at Bristol City Hall, to D'Amato and Downs, a joint venture in the amount of $175,770, to refer this to Corporation Council for review and to authorize the mayor or the acting mayor to execute the contract. 
So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, I just wanted to say, I think, you know, when we hear City Hall renovation, it's intimidating. But I've sat through some of these initial meetings and learning about the lack of accessibility for disabled residents uh, in particular. I think there are some serious things that do need to be addressed within the City Hall um, building, and it's important that we uh, do this project, you know, with the proper kind of, I don't know, right. initial work. Uh, but just to highlight that this isn't just about mm -hmm. renovating City Hall. It's about making City Hall accessible for everybody that lives in Bristol. So and we, I think it's important. we do have our public works structure here who's been shepherding this project through. And I don't know if you want to say anything, Ray, but what we've concentrated on is the mechanicals, uh, plumbing, electrical, all of that upgrade. Most of the systems are not only old, but they're failing. So that's an issue. ADA access is critical. Um, the city clerk's vault space is a critical issue because of permanent records that she must, is mandated to have here in the building. And then obviously the, the aesthetic piece of how we do this, if it could improve the street line while we're doing this work is also something that we're interested in because of everything happening um, downtown. But I'll let you do a brief overview if you'd like. Uh actually you know mayor you I, you uh, touched on all, you know all the major you know items you know there are you know objectives you know for the project as the mayor indicated you know the number one is uh, utilities uh, MEP HAC you know systems within the building uh, the other one is ADA accessibility uh, fire code issues we currently uh, uh, you know we will you know bring the building up to you know current fire codes you know standards uh, and you know, also as a result of the work we're going to do, concentrate it along North Main Street, also improve the aesthetics of the building. Yep. So so far, it's been the interview process was great, and I think it's interesting the um, the combination of Damato Downs Joint Venture and Cusenberry Arcari Malik, which we'll handle next is very familiar to all of us because that's the team that's currently doing the Memorial Boulevard Magnet School project as well. So there's already synergy there. Yeah. And uh, I think that this is going to be an exciting phased project. So this is the beginning phase of, you know, just for people who may not have been following it, what if you could just talk briefly about what this now means, what happens next in terms of these two um, entities working together. So these, these two contracts really allow us to proceed with, you know, the design and there's really two, con you know, primary consultants associated with that. One of them is the architect who, uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, designs the building, but the other one during the design process, which is critical, is really the construction manager who, with his expertise in construction, really has input into the design, you know, process, you know, to, quite frankly, to make sure that we uh, stay on budget and meet the objectives of the project. I would say this is a credit to both consultants, you know, certainly as, you know, tonight a, uh, you know, council, you know, acts on it, we move forward with execution is on the contracts, but as recently as today, I met with both consultants a, uh, for an extended period of time, really to have, uh, you know, essentially a kickoff, you know, meeting to, uh, you know, talk about the project objectives, make sure that the consultants are on the same page and uh, uh you know, one of the things that, you know, that I stress is through the design process, you know, that A, you know, we need input from the stakeholders as far as, you know, the needs, you know, of the building and that the city through, you know, a cost analysis wants to make conscious decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we are with the cost analysis piece. So there'll be a lot more happening with this project that we'll all be up to date on as we go through it. So good, it's a strong start based on what we've done to date though. So thank you. Excuse me, Mayor, can I just add one thing? And and uh, I know you're in agreement with this, Ray. You know, I, I, I'd like to keep things positive, but it's gotta be acknowledged that this has gone on for too long without renovating City Hall and, you know, previous administrations have kicked the can down the road and it would be irresponsible to kick it any further. It's truly a case that, especially the major equipment, you know, components in mm -hmm. the building are past their useful life. Yeah. 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 Your Honor, if, yes. if I may, uh, and this particular position that we're uh, approving this evening is through pre-construction, correct? There would, it's up to that point, just it's, before it's, construction? It's just before construction. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
And if I could just add one last thing, um, you know, just to hammer home how important it is to do this review as for, for the disability perspective, you know, we're lucky to be able to walk up a set of stairs to come into this building at the most convenient parking lot to City Hall. But people that are not able to walk into the building that would need a walker or a wheelchair have to park either on the street, try to get themselves up onto the sidewalk to come into the accessible entrance, or they park behind the building too, correct? They could go in that way? Yes, but I can tell you that, you know, you know, I have worked here for a number of years. I work in public works just by the location of my office. When I come out, I have literally seen on numerous occasions people, you know, you know, a, uh, you know, handicapped people just about crawling up the stairs. Uh -huh. you know, it's literally this building is constructed as a, a as a raised ranch. You can't yeah. come to the building <laughs> out, you know, to grade. Yep. A, uh, you know, we do, you know, technically the, uh, you know, handicap accessibility building is on the uh, you know north side but in all fairness to residents it's difficult to find uh, most people you know come into it you know through the uh, south entrance and right away there are you know there are a, uh, you know there's a staircase in front of them yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. yeah no so thank you i appreciate uh mm -hmm. you, you giving clarification for the viewing audience because i don't think if you're able to do those things you don't think of the barrier mm -hmm. that it poses for people that are are not able to do those things mm -hmm. and so I think that's uh, really important, and I appreciate you making that a highlight of this this activity. And also a local contractor. I was happy to see that, too. Okay. If there's no further conversation, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 13 is the award of contract 2P21026B, Architectural Engineering Services Relative to Renovations at Bristol City Hall, to Quisenberry Arcaria Malik, LLC, for $760,750, and to refer the matter to Corporation Council for review and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. So moved. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 14 is an approval for the city to enter into a letter of intent with Carrier Construction Inc. or its assigns for exclusive rights to parcel 6, parcel 7, and parcel 8 on a map known as Center Square Resubdivision for a mixed use development with market rent apartments and commercial space and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute and to refer to Corporation Council for review. So this item was anticipated to be acted on tonight because the Economic and Community Development Commission met last Thursday. And so what we do is we review and then we send to council. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, when we got to the meeting Thursday night, uh, the carrier construction representatives had asked to revise their letter of intent to now also include parcel five which in essence, for those of you who may not be familiar with the parcel numbers, is absolutely the entire remaining parcel across the street where the farmer's market is, starting at the northerly portion where McDonald's is and coming all the way over to Hope Street and going all the way back to where the public works recently constructed that public parking lot. So with that being said, all of the paperwork and everything that we had prepared was for locks six, seven, and eight, not five, six, seven, and eight. So we're gonna have to table, or I, I don't know what would the appropriate piece would be. Uh, you can just actually take it off. Take it off the agenda because yeah. it's not gonna come back in this format. So we're having a special meeting this week to review their revision and the addition of parcel five through the downtown committee, which is um, a subcommittee of the Economic and Community Development Commission. It will then go to the Economic and Co Community Development Commission again, and we will see this again for the March council meeting. But we're very excited about this because I think this represents what a lot of people are waiting for in terms of not just looking at an empty parking lot, but actually seeing plans and how they're going to be reviewed um, and then built over the next 18 months. So, um, and the fact that it's the carrier construction company, which does incredible work. And for those of you who, if you have the opportunity, in the next month or so, when they do their tours, you have to go see what they built on Main Street because they're absolutely amazing. And if we can get that type of quality for market rate apartments across the street from City Hall and the Police Department with some planned open space and everything else that's happening, we're, I think we're gonna finally get to that point where we have achieved 
some type of synergy for downtown and what people are looking for. I also think about people like JR and Leanne Rusgrove and Michael and Rachel Hazeltine and what 90 additional apartments means downtown to their businesses and all the other small businesses, as well as the 36 units on Main Street, what's potentially happening at Sessions. All of a sudden you have a downtown that's filled with people that both are working here and are also living here. And I think that that's something that we uh, have been striving for. So it's great to see it happen. I'm disappointed that we have to wait a month to actually vote on it, but I think what we might see come back after the Economic and Community Development Commission and the carriers meet on um, his request will be an even better project. And excuse I'll, me, Mayor, and, and with all those people downtown, they might even have uh, uh, an opportunity to attend something at the Rockwell Theater. Yes, that's another benefit. Absolutely. I just want to defer to Councilman Perleski, who also serves on economic and community development, if you have anything to add from that night. Well, you know, it is. It's exciting. We were, uh, we were um, caught short a little bit because we were expecting one thing and we received another. And um, uh, we have a quality builder, as you mentioned, Mayor, who's doing a great job on, on Main Street. And um, um, he's proud of the work he does. So somebody who I think we can rely on to do a nice job downtown, but a lot of questions still remain. There's a lot of work to be done uh, on both the pr uh, proposal and, as we all know, the devil's in the details. So um, it's exciting, uh, but um, we've got work to do. We had originally assumed that we would be able to use Parcel 5 for some construction staging for this project. And also we have to deal with employee parking issues. And we also have a small lease with the post office that is of concern as well. So there's some of the details that Councilman Perleski is alluding to that we have to do our homework on before we can move forward in a clean fashion. So the motion tonight is going to be to remove this item from the agenda pending uh, a new proposal to come forward. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Looking forward to March. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Attorney Clift, you look like you have something you want to say. Uh, the next one? Okay. Um, I thought I did the wrong motion. No. Okay. All right. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we are at the end of our agenda, which has one executive session regarding the matter of William Leone versus the city of Bristol for a variety of workers' comp claims. We will be going into executive session. We're, we're not ready for that. We'd like to remove that from oh, the agenda as well. Okay. But I have one other item. I think we may need a technical correction to an action taken back on item um, uh, 10, uh, where we appointed two individuals from the health district. Mm -hmm. I thought, because I was monitoring in my office upstairs, I thought I heard the appointment for uh, citation hearing officers. It should be just citation officers. So if you could have the clerk check sure. that, and if that was the, uh, what was stated, if we could just by consent have a technical correction. Okay. Good catch. Nice so catch. we have two things that we need to do. The first is just a vote to remove item 15 as we are not ready to act on that. So moved. Second. So moved. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And lastly, a technical correction to the appointments that were made under agenda item 10. The appointment for Nicolette Arati and the appointment for Erica Mikulak is for a citation officer associated with the Bristol Burlington Health District. Right. And that can simply be by consent if okay. no, with no objection. Okay. Does yeah. everybody consent? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, Attorney Clift, for that. Thank you. Okay, we are at agenda item 16, which is any other business that is proper to come before the meeting. Is there anything, last thoughts, other than from Councilman Kelly, that anybody would like to share? <laughs> okay, then a motion to adjourn. Uh, I don't even know what time so it is. So moved. 8.09. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. To those on screen and those in the audience, thank you for joining us tonight.